I have been here. The Grey Goose, Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. With Barbara Favisham away, we couldn't do much about the pursuit of her 40 thieves, as we'd christened her father's syndicate associates. Lately, I'd managed to break the headlines a little. Incidentally, benefiting a charity here and there, and at the same time, adding a small percentage to the grist of my own mill. Selling myself one morning on my two-by-four flat veranda, I suddenly heard my warning buzzer go. This meant that someone was coming along the corridor to my flat. Then came the chimes at my door. Good morning, Fletcher. Oh, is it? <laughs> Inspector Ben Ford, come in. But my query as to the qualities of the morning are necessarily tempered by the entrance of Scotland Yard. <laughs> you must have a guilty conscience. What have you been doing? <laughs> well, last Wednesday I stole the crown jewels, <laughs> and yesterday I robbed the Bank of England. Other than that, I've led a blameless life. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Though, to tell you the truth, I sometimes wonder how blameless your life really is. Well, upon my word, Inspector Ben, there are moments when you give me goose flesh. Hmm. Grey goose flesh? Oh, oh any old colour. Dashed uncomfortable, too. Now, settle down and tell me why you've honoured me with an early visit. Well, as a matter of fact, I have an idea you might be willing to help us. Oh, delighted to be on the side of law and order at all times. Or mostly all times. What can I do? Well, you still maintain connection with your late father's firm, the Fletcher Safe and Lock Company, don't you? Good heavens, yes. And you're still adept with safes and locks yourself? True. I'm also a very good pickpocket, card sharper, no, no, and... No ragging. <laughs> all right. I don't think there's a safe made that I can't deal with, given time. Ah, that's just what I want to know. Now, I have a safe. You've lost the key or the combination? Oh, nothing of the kind. Look, stop interrupting. The safe I refer to is in a small house on the outskirts of London. I want to get at that safe and examine its contents. Everything points to this house being the meeting place of a group of subversive elements. Several of our boys have slipped in from time to time, but the safe has completely baffled them. Well, why don't you raid the place, lift the safe and so on? Well, we just can't. There's only suspicions. Nothing tangible enough to justify a search warrant. Between you and me, our boys got in under the lap. Officially, we mustn't act. One or two rather well-known and influential characters have been spotted going in and out. And there might be very trying repercussions if we ran foul of them. Well, uh, where do I come in? Listen, we must have the contents of that safe. Now, you on? You'll have police protection as far as possible. Well, with a, a cordon of police around me, I'll try. You'll have no police cordon. You'll just have me. Oh, right. I look fine in Dartmoor, sharing a cell with one-time Chief Inspector Ford. <laughs> All right. When do we commence our criminal careers? This very night. Say, midnight? The meetings sometimes last till 11 o'clock. Where do I meet you? It's a small blur in a row of similar ones. Number 17, Crane Crescent Ealing. Do you think you ought to come yourself? Why not? Well, I was just thinking, someone may be hanging around and recognise you. Especially those influential bigwigs you talk about. Oh, I don't think so. In any case, I'll have to risk it. I can't let anybody else handle it. It's too hush-hush. Just as you say. Well, will you do it? Well, if I can. You say the safe is a terror. Yes, every man has, as I said, been beaten. Could happen to me, too. However, I'll give it a go and see. But don't count on it. All right, thanks. See you at midnight, eh? On the dot. 17 Crane Crescent, Ealing. Oh, uh, when did your boys have their last trial? Oh, several days ago. I hope they left no traces. Might have raised some suspicion. I think we can guarantee that. See you again, then. All right. Cheerio. Dear me, dear me. I wonder if this is all fair and above board, Ben. I wonder whether you're taking me for a ride. I think I should have a look-see at this marvellous safe before midnight. Yes, that's the idea. Might prove very interesting. Hmm, I <laughs> think I'll get Charlie Austin to help. Hello? X here, Charlie. 
Do you know Ealing? Who's he? <laughs> Ealing is an outer suburb, Charlie. Could you get out to a place called Crane Crescent at nine o'clock? Yeah, of course I could. Well, about that time, I'll be walking down there. Join me, will you? Right out, Mr. X. I'll be on the lookout. Good. That's you, Mr. X. Correct, Charlie. Anybody around? Not lately. <laughs> Few blokes coming home. Oh, clarky, peaceful looking types. Small city blokes, I reckon. Sort of nine to five fellows in the office and five to nine in the pub. <laughs> After a hard day's work in the civil service. <laughs> well, all seems quiet. So we have to negotiate number 17. Seen any life there? No. Father ain't home yet, apparently. Mum's out and the kids... All right. No one at home, which is as we want it. There's a safe in there which I've got to have a look at, Charlie. I've got two hours and not a minute more. You ready? righty -o. I'll leave the front door to you. Oh, easy, money. These villa doors have all got the same sort of lock. Go ahead, then. Enter, my lord. The passage hay waits. Oh, a very ordinary sort of place. Linoleum. Cheap furniture. And if they've got a safe, it'll be full of nickel silver teaspoons, I'll bet. They have got a safe. Look! Oh, crikey. Ooh. Now, there is a problem. This will take a long time, Mr. Hicks. Give ourselves till 11 o'clock or 11.30, not a moment more. We'll take it turn and turn about. You start. No luck, Charlie. Well, not too much. I can match the tumblers, but oh, there's another trick. All right, my turn. Take a spell of keeping KV. How are you going? Fairly well. Damn it, there are 11 eccentric tumblers in this infernal combination. 11? Yes. A fine job of its kind. Thorin make two. Last. By Joe, Charlie, it nearly beat us. Oh, not even a nickel teaspoon as a reward. No. Doesn't it strike you as strange that a safe of this type should be in a small suburban villa? That's right. And stuffed with papers and books. Which we shall take back to my flat and examine at our leisure. Close it up, Charlie. Now, grab half of the stuff. I'll take the rest. My car's just along the road. What's the time? Uh, oh, just 11.15. My hat. It's a mere thing. Just make it, I think. Uh, All right. Jump in. Uh, what's the program now? This, Charlie. When we reach the flat, pile all this stuff into a cupboard and sit tight. You ain't coming in? No, I've another appointment for 12 o'clock. Maybe back about two. Don't let anybody in, even if it's the Lord Chamberlain or the King of Cadonia. Got it? <laughs> OK, Mr. X. That stuff we've lifted is dynamite, Charlie. And that house is no more a suburban residence than I am. Huh. Just back on time. I better stop here and walk the rest of the way. Think I did Ben an injustice when I thought it might be a grey goose trap. It looks like he's on to something special this time. Ah, number 17 again. Five after midnight. And no Ben that I can see. Maybe he's gone inside and is waiting for me. Good Lord, what's this? A body on the path. Whew. Jumping Moses, it's Ben himself. Ben, kosh too. Ben, mm. Ben, Ben, wake up. Mm. Not dead at any rate. Ben, Ben. Can you hear me? Yeah. What were the blazes do you want now? It's me, Fletcher. Look, mm. sit up. Oh. Can you, if I help? I think so. Oh, oh my head. Look, Ben, uh, this place is unhealthy. We can't hang around. Brace yourself. Uh, I'll drag you back to my car. Uh, no, no. Let's go in. I'm all right now. Oh, it's you, Fletcher. Yes, it's I. Lucky for you it is, too. Let's get inside. It's urgent. All right, if you still feel you can stand it. Yes, yes, I can. Hurry up. Right. Just a cheap lock on this door. 
open. Come in, Ben. <sighs> Safe. Must open it. Oh, I'll do my best. Mmm. It looks tough, though. Well, for heaven's sake, get a move on. Well, we can talk while we work. You just sit down and watch. How did you come to get coshed? I didn't. I came to meet you. Matter of fact, I, I strolled around here to make sure all was all right. Spent nearly half an hour. You see, I called off our boys for the night. Mm -hmm. Suddenly came the wallop and I blacked out. Somebody must have recognized you as a flatfoot. I did warn you, Ben. Yes, yes, I know you did. I should have had an escort or an assistant to keep a lookout. How's the safe going? Fairly well, Ben. It's a very tricky combination. Eleven tumblers. Except you? Mm, very. My fingers are nearly worn to the bone. How long do you think? I can't say. A few minutes maybe, or maybe another hour or so. By heavens, you've got to do it quicker than that, Fletcher. It'll be done when it is done, Ben, not before. By the way, this seems a most elaborate affair for a small house like this, doesn't it? It is. As I've told you, there's probably a very good reason for having a safe like that. Oh, can't you hurry, man? I am hurrying, Ben. Two more tumbles to fall and I shall open the door. I must get a look at the contents. They're going to surprise a lot of people, Fletcher. <laughs> I think perhaps you're right, Ben. Aha! Uh -huh. Here she comes. Great Scott! Empty! No. No, it can't be. Hey, let me look. No, it's not empty. There's a feather in it. A confounded, impertinent, damnable grey goose feather. <laughs> What a climax for Inspector Ben Ford. We can just imagine the silent chuckle indulged in by our friend, the Grey Goose. <laughs>